grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for that. Um, I like that last verse of that hymn that we just sang, Christ Be My Leader. I mean, it's a great hymn reminding us um, what sometimes gets lost, I think, in church is that this, again, as I was kind of saying with the, the pledge part, it's, it's not just something that we believe, but it's that Jesus is our Lord and King. Um, and uh, it said, uh, the last verse, Death cannot hold me, for he is the life, nor darkness, nor doubting, nor sin in its stain can touch my salvation. With Jesus, I reign. And that's a good reminder. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, my conscience bothers me, and I agonize a little bit about having church. I have, really have no desire to shut us down, but part of me feels like, you know, I, I think the COVID thing is pretty serious. Um, so ever, I know it's dangerous to talk about because everyone kind of has a different belief on it, but I feel like I got to say this, that I, I do think it's, um, it's serious, but that's why it's so important to be in church because nothing prepares us better for the serious and, and even death itself than being right with our Savior. Um, but we also, I think, you know, I, my conscience tells me, I, I, again, that we want, I want to encourage everyone to be uh, cautious, um, but this is the right place to be or to listen in on, um, and you do have permission to, to listen in uh, as things get, but we plan to keep going forward no one knows how the future will look exactly, but that's our plan to go forward. Um, but uh, thanks for hearing me out. Um, this week, and part of the reason maybe I think about that is because our focus this week is on leadership. And so I've been thinking a lot about leadership, and some of leadership is the buck stops here. You know, So there's some responsibility uh, that leaders have. Each week we've been talking about justice, and looking at it from the perspective of the Old Testament prophets, who I think have a lot to say about justice. And today we hear from a man known to his friends as Zeke the Freak. Well, maybe not, I don't know, but they could have called him that. Um, my pointer will work. Uh, I might have to point to you because my clicker is not working real well. There we go, thank you. Um, Ezekiel if you read it, you'll know, is, to put it mildly, an intense book. And one of the most important themes regarding justice uh, addresses leadership, and at this particular time in Judah's history, the lack thereof. And Zeke has some really attention-grabbing, uh, PG-13 at least, object lessons mostly because God's people weren't listening to him when he spoke in his normal voice, so he had to get extreme to communicate with them what he needed to tell them. Ezekiel chapter 34, uh, in that chapter, the Lord is concerned about leadership and their lack thereof among his sheep. Now, leaders play a, a disproportionately large role in the way the world is uh, run. We can think of leaders of nations like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln or, or Napoleon, Di uh, Napoleon Bonaparte uh, or Genghis Khan or Martin Luther or Martin Luther King Jr. They, they made a large impact on the world in part because they were such successful leaders. I, I bet there's people in your life maybe who didn't make the news or who wouldn't be considered by most of the world leaders, but in your life, in your family, played a huge role and changed your world dramatically. Well, in Ezekiel's day, as I said, Judah was in a dearth of leadership. Yahweh sees sheep who are starving and drinking muddied and uh, stamped upon water. Yahweh had provided shepherd for his people, um, rulers, prophets, and priests, who were to lead and care for them. However, these leaders were uh, irresponsible and uh, abusive. I want to read to you just a little bit of the beginning of chapter 34. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with wool, and slaughter the choice animals 
but you do not care for the flock, or that you do not care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there were no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over them all the mountains and on every hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or even looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and has so been plundered and has become food for all the wild animals, and because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than for my flock, therefore, our shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds, so of, I, was, I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths and it, it will no longer be food for them. So I think that's a huge concept of justice in the Old Testament. And we often think, we maybe don't think of it from that perspective, but we can see what God wants because he says all the things his people are not doing, not caring for the sick, not looking for the strayed or lost, caring only for themselves and making themselves fat and not caring what's happening to other people. That's an important Old Testament concept. Well, New Testament too, I mean. But it's, it's got its roots. It, God has not changed in what he wants and what he desires out of his people and, and out of you know, leaders in general as well. And so that's why God's justice comes, because people have been abused and hurt and mistreated. And so the Lord says, I'm not going to ignore these terrible leaders, right? Um, and he's going to do something about them. I think of uh, you know, when Sa Saddam Hussein was doing terrible things and eventually had to be taken down. Um, that's kind of what God's uh, perspective is as well. Um, so uh, kings, um, kings were anointed to uh, lead the, pro the people and oversee that the nation as a whole publicly followed the Lord's instructions. That's what the king's job was. Prophets were to ensure that the words of the Lord were spoken clearly and proclaimed uh, to, to the Lord, and um, priests were also to intervene between Yahweh and his people. Um, and when they sinned, to provide a path toward reconciliation and restoration. However, the kings and the court had not done their job. Instead, they had been selfish and destructive, and they are simply turning a blind eye to all kinds of abuse at this point. The prophets, they're not speaking the truth, they are speaking lies. Prophets who only care about, well, prophets and currying favor with those in power. The priests, well, they're offering sacrifices both to, as Ezekiel, as the Lord shows Ezekiel, both to foreign gods and animal gods, and then, you know, disrespectfully offering some of the remains to the Lord. Um, these priests have been greedy and they're treating God. They're treating the Lord of heaven and earth as he was like a, a greedy and small beans crime boss that they could just give a little to and he'd basically be quiet and not bother them. So this problem if in Israel's point, at this point in Israel's history goes all the way to the top. Um, I mean, how could a uh, sports team do any good if the coach isn't doing his job? How could a workplace environment work well if the boss is doing a terrible job. Um, a nation can't operate without good and effective leaders. Unless you were, in this point in Judah's history, unless you were a corrupt leader yourself, I, I can promise you if you were a good and upstanding citizen, you would have wanted the nation of Judah to be judged at, these time, at this point in time. You would have wanted things fixed. And that's what Yahweh says he's going to do. Well, we're in a different scenario, although, I mean, of course, there's always overlap. It's important still today, an important part of life, to have good leaders. Good leaders starting where we can make a difference in our families and workplaces and nation. And I think it's appropriate, right, this week is Thanksgiving, and it would be first and foremost appropriate for us to give thanks for the leaders that we do have. I'm not saying they're perfect. And if, I'm sure that 
Some people, both, everyone's really frustrated, and COVID and the shutdowns haven't made that any easier. And I think Democrats are frustrated with Republicans, and Republicans are frustrated with Democrats. But at least it hasn't come to killing each other, right? Because that's, unfortunately, the reality in some places. And um, I also think, as we talk about leaders, it's important uh, to keep in mind that it's, we need good leaders. We want good leaders, and we want good leaders in, in government. But it's also important to remember that, that we can make anything into a god, and even our leaders and uh, political parties or particular political leaders can become our gods, and sometimes, frankly, they do. Um, now, I'm sure no Christian would conscientiously worship any of our leaders, whoever they might be, um, but it can happen nonetheless um, when we listen to what our leaders say and we forget about what our Lord says. That's kind of the, the basic definition, if you want, of when something's got out of whack. When we say, well, what this particular leader says is more important than what my Lord says. Um, now, and that I am really not, I think it can go both ways. And I mean, I'm not just saying that. I think I have seen places where it goes in both ways, where both parties and its human nature have, have basically started worshiping or looking to political parties to fix everything and not relying on what the Lord has said or listening to him. And I think it's important to remind ourselves of that, especially in, as we talk about leadership, remember who our ultimate leader is, whom we pledge allegiance to above all other leaders, and that's Christ our Lord. Leaders bear significant responsibility in this world. I say that with a little bit of fear and trepidation because I'm a small scale and limited leader, and I desire your prayers. Um, but, and there's some accountability, and sometimes that makes me uh, a little bit nervous, or if not, downright fearful. But still today, we expect good things out of leaders, and with responsibility, or with uh, uh, privilege or power comes responsibility. Um, and we do and should want good and just leaders. Um, and the best leaders are the ones, kind of like Ezekiel describes in 34, are not those that simply cater to our fancies or give us money or make our life better. The best leaders are those who do what's right for the whole nation. Um, and while there are no perfect leaders, there are good leaders, and we ought to give thanks for them. So, what should Christians do when it comes to leadership? Uh, well, uh, there are some things that are clear in the scriptures, and um, one is that the government is there for, I don't mean to you know, de denigrate it, the government is there to accomplish some important goals, and Paul, in Romans chapter 13, who has absolutely no say in who his governor is, which happens to be Caesar, I think at this point it's the same Caesar who's going to kill him, and yet he says we ought to show respect, and first of all, and most importantly, pray for our leaders. And, and secondly, respect them because the government was designed and, and often is there for our benefit, uh, probably more often than we care to admit. And so I think it's important for us, more important than anything else, is to pray for our leaders. And secondly, again, as it's Thanksgiving, it could be worse. And uh, to be thankful that there really, I think if you think about it, there really are a lot of leaders that are at least trying and doing some good at all levels of government. And uh, although obviously, of course, they are imperfect sinners like all the rest of us. And uh, as Thanksgiving, it's important to give thanks because I don't think we usually don't get, things don't improve until you realize what you have and are thankful for what you do have. Um, another thing is that it's also better, as Paul says, it's better to show respect for leaders whenever we can, even when we disagree or disobey. And sometimes it's okay for Christians to disagree or disobey. But it's better as far as it is possible, it seems to be Paul's attitude, is better as far as possible to obey laws, particularly since most laws are aimed at making the world a better place. It's better whenever we can 
to abide by the laws that are laid down for us, unless they are morally evil. And then even kind of the biblical Christian model never says anything about fighting back or attacking, but we do have permission to disobey evil laws. And if we get punished for disobeying evil laws, the Lord will not forget our faithfulness. We should try, in other words, to stay on the right side of the law as much as we can, because for maybe this reason more than any other. One, that way, or the secondary reason is because then the government doesn't have to waste time and resources on correcting or punishing us. And more importantly, then we don't have to waste time or resources or time in court or jail arguing uh, when we could be focusing on more important things like sharing the gospel, loving the Lord our God and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Now again, that doesn't mean there's not a point um, where it, it becomes untenable, um, but as far as we can, we should try to focus our resources on, on doing those most important things, sharing the gospel, loving the Lord our God, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Still, as the book of Ezekiel is a strong testimony, there is such a thing as bad leadership, and it can do serious damage, causing hurt and pain and even death to those around them when uh, it, the leaders do not lead well. And sometimes there's, frankly, not that much we can do about it, right? At least not in the immediate future. And while I want to encourage us to be good citizens, um, that doesn't mean, again, that we have to agree with everything that happens, nor do we have to pretend that everything's perfect or rosy. Honesty and looking for the truth with humility um, is both biblical, I also think it's difficult and important uh, for society. But this side of heaven, the world will never be completely cleaned up. There will always be problems. There will always be issues with bosses, with <laughs> your parents, if you're kids, with government, with all kinds of leaders, because this world is not perfect. It could be worse, and we have reasons to give thanks, but admittedly, sometimes it can get pretty bad. And that is exactly why Ezekiel, the words of our Lord in Ezekiel chapter 34 and in the whole book, are so important. Because Yahweh says uh, he's coming back uh, to fix and to shepherd his people himself. Um, he will one day bring justice. And, and those leaders who deserve punishment will lure, and, and who have not repented will, in fact, be judged. But more importantly, and more relevant to us, Yahweh has come to rescue uh, his people. Um, uh, the Jews of Ezekiel's day had to wait uh, for God to rescue his people, but we get to remember, instead of wait, we get to remember and look back at what, how God has already begun the rescue plan in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because Jesus is a leader unlike any other. No matter how good or bad, Jesus far surpasses every other leader we will ever come across in our life. First of all, because he did what was right. Not just once, but always. Secondly, Jesus did what no other leader could or would do. He's fixing this world really. He's not just making a bunch of campaign promises, but he's actually going to fix this world from top to bottom. And he's doing so only by the power, not by power or politics or by the wisdom of this world, but he does throw so through his own self-sacrifice, his own willingness to be tortured and to bear the cross for us and for our salvation. Um, Jesus is the leader who will never, ever fail us. He will not fall asleep on the job, and he would rather die than betray or abandon us, even if sometimes we are less than faithful to him. He will ensure not just today, but eternally, that things are the way that they should be, that justice is truly established and maintains. He will think not of himself or of privilege, but of his people, of his needs, of you, and of your eternal salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.